What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another New World video. Today we're going to be talking about the best starting weapons to choose, but not in the way that you may think. I don't necessarily believe that there's a best as much as I believe that there's actually a best for you. And I think a lot of the journey in an MMO is trying to figure out what you like best, not necessarily what somebody else thinks is best for you. And that's the joy of it all. So with that being said, we're going to go through each of these weapons. I'm going to talk about, you know, pros and cons of my experience and what I've seen, um, you know, fighting, I don't know, you know, killing thousands of players <laughs> and like seeing this throughout all the test phases and changes. Now, keep in mind, if we are going to receive patch notes for New World pre-launch, uh, I want you guys to be aware that some of this stuff could change. However, we're going to stick to generalities and I'm going to try to talk about this in a way that aims more towards playstyles. So if you have a specific playstyle, you might be able to lean or gravitate more towards some of these weapons. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, Sword and Shield. This is my baby right here. It took me six test phases to figure out that this is what I was going to use. Uh, one thing I really like about this weapon is it's extremely balanced. Okay, mean meaning that there's it's not really like super strong at any like crazy thing other than like tanking and it's not like super weak at anything it gives you options so for example if you're going to be tanking in the defender tree you guys can look at shield rush shield bash and then of course defiant stance if you guys are looking to tank you guys are going to need a carnelian gem here and this will give you a taunt applied to shield bash and defiant stance and with those two things together with our powers combined i am captain planet you can now taunt enemies and your real tank uh, so that's where tanking starts this is a very very strong build if you're looking for just standing in the thick of things delaying the game so your teammates can get there and crush your opposition in terms of the sword master tree you can actually aoe farm pretty efficiently with this build especially with the cooldown reduction here uh, just because it's just kind of nice um, so if you're pairing or planning on going like a paladin build, you can go like Swordmaster plus, you know, life staff and heal yourself so you don't have to buy potions because we don't want to buy those. Uh, but this is pretty solid. This build actually can deal a pretty significant amount of damage because one thing um, I think a lot of people overlook is that sword and shield scales with strength and dexterity. So if you're looking for some style plays, you can get away with running this not as a tank, but with a completely different weapon, let's say a deck scaling weapon like, a, you know, a bow or a musket or a spear. Um, and you can create some interesting things. So I think if you're looking for a well-balanced build or if you're looking to just be a tank, this build could be for you. So now let's get into the rapier. Um, the rapier, I just want to say up front, is a very high skill cap weapon. Um, this weapon is probably one of the funnest weapons in the game. Uh, definitely a crowd favorite. It's one of those weapons, though, that everybody thinks is a good idea until they figure out everything that they have to learn in order to use this weapon. But I'd say that the few people who do learn how to use this weapon find great rewards. I've seen some people clap with this weapon uh, just from practicing the riposte and the timing because timing is everything with this weapon. Uh, you have to know your ranges. You got to know everything that's going on. You got to know when. You got to know how. And the reason why uh, or another reason why the skill cap is so high is because you have to understand the animation windows on the other abilities and or monsters so you know when to pop your riposte and use all that stuff. So I think that this weapon is for my players out there that like styling on people because there's no better way, in my personal opinion, to style on somebody than when they think that they're going to beat you. You hit them with the riposte and then it's like Street Fighter Championship, you know, 10 years ago. <laughs> okay, so I'll just go ahead and say that. So just be forewarned. It's a lot of fun. It's really good if you guys are looking for, you know, just PvE only like Tondo, you know, Flourish and Finish. Like all of these abilities are great with the bleed stack. It's a lot of fun. But if you guys are looking for super style PvP, then Rapier, I think, is definitely where it's at. Now, as we get into Hatchet, there's not really much to say about this weapon, other than that for a starter weapon, it's just all around great. Um, you have protection from death here, you have Berserk, which, you know, is just awesome. 
gives you like a movement speed buff can also make running through your quests a lot faster by the way um i'm actually thinking about testing this with my sword and shield for large scale pvp because uh, i'm curious with this throw because this weapon is the only weapon that kind of has a heal reduction in the game currently um so i'm really curious to see how this disease cloud uh would work let's say if i'm frontlining and then i pop my disease cloud right in the middle of the enemy team stacked on top of you know one of our two-hand axe users gravity well at how much is that going to reduce the healing keep our team alive and give us forward movement and that's something that i'm thinking about but that's <laughs> leaps leaps and years beyond but for starting weapons overall i mean i feel like you can't go wrong with hatchet hatchet is just great it's it's the soloist dream so if you're the type of mmo player that likes to solo uh, this could be one of the weapons that you definitely could choose just because it's just nice. It really eliminates the need for anything else. It'll minimize your potion usage, your food usage, pretty much everything. And you could just run around and some of the skills and stuff look really cool too. So let's get into the spear. Um, the spear is also another one of my favorite weapons. I think in the closed beta, uh, this weapon was really, really slept on. I can't speak on how it was slept on or not for open beta because I was focused on crafting because I was trying to learn the PVE side of things there. Um, but overall, uh, spear has a ton of utility. Uh, this is just one of those weapons that you can pretty much use with any other weapon. So for my life staff users, which we'll get into here in a bit, um, this is a great secondary. For my tanks out there, this is also a great secondary. For my bow users, musket users, this is a great second secondary so you guys can create space between you and your targets. Now, with power comes great responsibility <laughs> okay uh, but anyway um the reason i say that is because when you look at the abilities you have some easy to use moves like sweep and of course cyclone once you start getting into pvp and skill play though you're going to start to get into javelin which gets a knockdown uh, once you level it up the sweep of course which is a stun and the vault kick which a lot of people will whiff i promise you i've done it tons of times but when you start getting into the skill play of the spear it takes a lot of practice like you're going to really have to play with your directional controls and how you're going to aim and timing your enemy movement to get this down packed but once you get it down packed the spear is just nasty so this is going to be for the people that are just looking for a all-around weapon that has decent cc some damage dealing capabilities and some harmful effect application I will say that the mods that you guys can get for your skills, unless they've changed them for launch, are also pretty awesome. In terms of weaknesses here though, if you miss your skill-based abilities with the spear, you can get punished really, really hard. So just make sure you guys keep that in mind. And that's why I said like learning the timings for these abilities and maximizing on what you're going to be doing with this can really help you a long way. So we're gonna talk about the Great Axe next uh the great axe is cool definitely a crowd favorite deals a ton of damage really hits hard you got forward team utility with gravity well so you could pop this uh what this does is just basically puts this big ass orb on the screen that like slows targets down right so they ain't getting away um and it also has some passes passes which can help your teammates around you i think that this is a great weapon for people that don't know if they want to go PvP or PvE, because <laughs> this weapon can really go either way. Now, one thing I will say with the Great Axe is the way that it's designed is they're not getting away. If you're skilled with the Great Axe, especially with the abilities with the charge here combined with the Reap, especially if you extend the distance to 8 meters, plus the Execute or and or Gravity Well, let's say you ran Reap, you ran the Charge, and you ran Gravity Well just for stopping power, there's no escaping you <laughs> all right so if you're the people that like to run if you're the person that likes to run people down or run creatures down yeah this is what we're talking about i will warn you though that this weapon really doesn't start to fill up until after level 10. so once you get this weapon to level 10 and you start to uh stack your passives your weapon passes on top of each other this weapon really comes alive but early on, it, it's gonna feel a little rough just because like you're, you're not gonna be dealing enough damage for you to feel like you, you know, you're going places and you haven't really unlocked the passes for like the self-sustain just yet. So in the beginning, just understand that it's kind of a slow start here. But other than that, if you're willing to you know thug it out and just make it through this, uh, the ax really wakes up into a super 
great weapon. I almost made the mistake when I started playing the thing. I was like, man, this weapon is average. But, like, it's not. <laughs> and then uh, one thing I would like to see, though, eventually one day, is I would like to see them add grit to this whirlwind or give a mod that adds grit to it or something. Uh, because that could make a lot of fun, you know, spin to win mechanics and all that. But like I said, o great overall weapon. Um, great for people that don't really know whether they want a PvE or PvP, or but they're just definitely looking to have some fun. Not to mention that if you guys are looking to get through the quests easy, you can invest in this charge uh, ability that like runs you super fast across the screen, which help you cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time. Now, in terms of weaknesses with the axe, your cooldowns are long, man. You got some really long cooldowns. I think the axe has like some of the longest cooldowns in the game. So, with that being said, since you have really long cooldowns on a lot of these abilities, uh, you're going to have to really master your timing and know when and when not to use your abilities. Because like a well-timed execute will be money and you can melt people, right? But if you miss, you got a long time to wait. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so so that's the thing. Same thing with you, you know your gravity well and stuff like that. You gotta you gotta position these well. You gotta know how to aim these bad boys. You gotta you know know the distances, the ranges, where to set it up, where to throw it, where not to throw it. Uh, but these are some key things that you definitely will think about with the great axe. Now, once we get into the Warhammer, there's not really nothing much to say about this weapon. Um, it's the CC Beast. If you like banging on things and hearing them, ping, ping, you know, you know those sounds, um, this is your weapon. This is the weapon that is pretty much a failsafe. You can run with any other weapon for get-in situations, get-out situations. It's really good for team setup in terms of PvP. It's solid. You, you can even put a Carnelian Gem on this if you want to run a secondary for Taunt. Um, if you guys are running like Sword and Board and Hammer, this is really solid in Siege. Um, but like I said, it's just an overall great weapon. If you're trying to style on people, though, you have an opportunity to with the Juggernaut Tree. Um, just understand that the Juggernaut Tree, it's going to require you to know what the hell you're doing. Because this is going to require you to be in the fight all the time. Meaning, you're going to be applying Armor Breaker, for instance. <laughs> And you're definitely going to be using Wrecking Ball. The crazy thing, though, is that when you add grit to your heavy attacks, it kind of makes it a thing where you're staying there and you're just pounding on people. Because this is an easy way to start getting grit on your attacks early without having to have 300 strength. So it can allow you to stay in the fight. So I would say that if you're the type of person that likes to be in the thick of it all the time, Warhammer is probably going to be your thing. All right, because the amount of control that you'll be able to put out, the amount of support you'll be able to put out in just terms of, you know, zoning enemy players is great. But once you're done, you're done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's something to, to, to take into consideration as well. Uh, this does offer a little bit of healing here if you get this passive. And there are some mods that give you healing too uh, on the Crowd Crusher tree. But if you don't have those, again, once you're done, you're done. So just keep that in mind when you guys are getting into this or think about that when you start to position whatever your secondary weapon is going to be. Now, with bow and musket, I'm just going to talk about these together because I think the, the blessing and their curse is pretty much the same thing. Um, if you can aim, they're great. If you can't, it could be rough. <laughs> okay. But both of them have, you know, some utility, some forward utility that you guys can play with. I mean, you have a ton of AoE here. So, for instance, if you can't aim, you can really rely on the poison shot. So, if you land a well-timed poison shot, you know, this is going to deal damage over time. Two targets. So, you can just kind of run around even if you can't aim and try to shoot them while you just keep poison shotting them, right? Combine that with a well-timed arrow rain, which this will kind of require you to get used to the abilities. But it definitely can still work. And again, this is if you can't hit the broad side of a barn, then you're probably just going to be focused on AoE. But this can still be a good thing in mass scale PvP, especially sieges, because of the sheer amount of damage that you can put out just shooting this in the middle of a crowd, okay? So that's definitely something that you can look at. And for my styling, folks, for the rest of the abilities here, of course, all of this is going to require some aim, but if you have the aim, you could definitely do some things with this bow, okay? Uh, shouts out to my boy Lance. Uh, the dude ran bow and spear in the uh, closed beta, and... Pfft, 
dude that dude was crazy man top of the dps charts and all that and see dude dude was nuts for real again this weapon has a lot of potential but again it's going to be skill capped based on how well you can aim and how well you can maneuver but if you position your mods and your equipment mods correctly like you could have a lot of fun with this now before we get into the musket though i just want to say that bow and musket i know a lot of you guys are going to be excited to use these they can be kind of tough to use in the beginning because you just won't have any ammo like you'll be opening supply chests and getting like 20 ammo and that's it dude you got 20 bullets or 20 arrows and then when you're done you're done um, so I would advise if you guys are going to go musket or bow, uh, try to get some other weapon that scales with dexterity on the side uh, and or intelligence if you guys are rocking the, the musket and just hold yourself over until you're able to get a nice stockpile of ammo and then once you get that you guys will be good to go. But same thing is going to apply here overall for the musket. Uh, if you can aim, you can have some crazy things going especially if you guys are getting the gems that increase the damage you deal to a target uh if the target's at full health um i think there's a gem if i remember correctly it gives 30 percent more damage to targets that are full health so for my guys out there that like doing them headshots of them long range heads headshots damn can't talk uh because the musket gets a 3x zoom <laughs> so you could have some fun sniping the hell out of some people this is also really really good to kind of take people off a of siege weapons in a siege situation and or snipe unsuspecting targets so this can be a lot of fun if you can aim if you are having trouble aiming you can focus more on being a trapper positioning multiple traps to stop and or slow your enemies and then of course the sticky bomb for aoe support now back in the closed beta there were a lot of complaints that this was very underwhelming so i don't know if this has changed just yet but we'll have to test and see but if you want to be a sniper this 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 weapon is probably for you if you like the 3x zoom it's probably for you if you can aim it's probably for you if you cannot aim i'd probably just go bow with aoe <laughs> until you know you get that aim labs down uh, but overall i think the musket is a lot of fun you have a lot of forward utility with a very very high damage potential but again high skill cap now when we get into fire Fire Staff, Life Staff, and Ice Gauntlet. All right, let me just say right now that these three are probably three of the best starting weapons in the game. Uh, specifically, the Fire Staff is just one of the easiest weapons to use overall early on, just because you're going to be putting out a bunch of damage, especially if you're specking full intelligence. You got ways to get in, you got ways to get out with the dash, and overall, it's just nice, especially if you want to, you know, play solo. This is another really good solo weapon because you have self sustain. This pinwheel thing can hear, heal you. <laughs> you got lots of damage output, and you can kill multiple targets at a time. Ice Gauntlet is really good for like CC coverage, it's just really nice, and plus, it's ice, so it just looks cool. But these are things that you're gonna have to think about. Now, I will say Fire Staff Ice Gauntlet combo is just it's just really, really good. But I think that even though Fire Staff and Ice Gauntlet are really easy to get into in the very beginning, all right, these two weapons, make no mistake, have a very, very high skill cap later on. Um, because of the fact that you have to understand how to use these abilities efficiently and what your ranges are, what you can get away with, can't get away with, how to manage your mana is going to be really, really important. Um, if you can manage those two things and, and understand like what, you know, what your abilities can do, whether with the fire staff and or the ice gauntlet, you can be a beast on the battlefield, especially with this, this ice storm um, in siege situations. And or ice shower with the one second root plus the slow things can get a little nutty all right so with all of this even with ice pylon ice shield i've seen ice sh or into entombed excuse me i've seen this manipulated in a wonderful amount of ways and you can really take advantage of this just be careful not to leave yourself vulnerable because they can't break your ice shield and clap you all right so <laughs> there is that but all in all i think uh, fire step ice gauntlet hands down some of the easiest if not the easiest starter weapons to use in terms of easing into the game if you guys prefer the casting lifestyle but again the skill ceiling will raise once you get to higher level because once people start running up on you or gravity welling you or pretty much any other thing that a lot of these other weapons will get in terms of cc and gap closing you gotta you gotta know what you're doing or you're gonna have a, huff, uh, a rough time so last but not least guys we're going to talk about the life staff i mean this is pretty much a no-brainer here healing is great everybody likes it. it it makes everybody's life better 
Um, this is cool. They recently uh, added a nerf to the healing. So if you're wearing heavy armor, you heal for 20% less. But you can easily offset that with gems and you know all things of that nature. So there's not really too much to worry about there. So Paladin build is still viable. One thing to keep in mind though, um, even though you can spec full focus and you can potentially deal damage with this weapon, especially early game if you guys are looking to just kind of farm as a healer, it, it's still not as fast as like a pure DPS. But but if you are going like a semi-focus build or full focus build, you can use this as a supplement uh, to kind of heal yourself. Or if you're going like baby focus build, like just a few points in focus and the rest of your points in like strength or dex or whatever, you can use this as a couplet to your other weapon to heal yourself so you don't have to use potions. So there's that. Uh, I will say that it will help if you are a life staff main to have friends that you can group up with because elite dungeon farming is amazing and healing in this game will definitely take some practice even though it looks like on screen it's just a bunch of healing circles that you're throwing on the ground it's not as simple all right so um, i'd advise if you guys are going to go life staff that you start playing with your abilities and your skills and learning what your passives do and you know how they interact with the people that you're trying to keep alive and or yourself and then just kind of roll from there life staff doesn't really have any flaws really uh you just got to really be on the ball and make sure that you're you know doing your jobs to the best of your abilities because you can see yourself at the top of the charts um in sieges and stuff like that quite easily if you know what you're doing shouts out to quarter by the way all in all, guys, um, like I said, I just wanted to take a little bit of time and talk about each of these weapons and give you guys a general idea of like how they work and talk about it. Not get too specific, but just give you like a general overflow. So like if you're thinking about like specific weapons and how they work or how they operate, hopefully this video gave you a better idea because uh, a lot of these weapons shine in different ways. And really, uh, one of the biggest mistakes that I made when I played New World is that I didn't test them. I made an assumption or an opinion on things that I mean I never I don't ever play caster right which was one of them until I started playing with caster stuff and it was actually pretty fun right same thing with healing I don't heal I'm a tank right and then I heal I was like oh this is actually pretty cool right oh man this is OP <laughs> so don't be afraid to try weapons respects are free up to a certain point with weapons I think it's level I can't remember what level it is on weapons until respects start costing money it could be 10 11 12 like I don't know I can't remember somebody in the comments help me out I, I just don't remember but the respects are free up to a certain point so take advantage of that and switching your bills is just a matter of having a second set of gear and then swapping over also one thing to note before we bring this video to a close please understand what each of these weapons scale with Right, so if you're looking at your attributes, make sure you pay attention to what these weapon diagrams are so you know what weapon goes where with what stat. And then from there, you have your best foot forward. And it's okay if you don't like the weapons that you try, just try something else. Again, it took me six test phases before I finally got to the point where I was like, okay, sword and board is my jam. And I've tested everything <laughs> okay so uh with that being said guys if you guys got any questions comments concerns definitely let me know in the comment box below only three and a half days remain man and we're in there like swimmer man so anyway i love you guys you guys have a wonderful day and we'll see you guys in the next video peace